So when we were discussing the reaction quotient Q, we are comparing it, or we were comparing it, okay, in the sense that we're trying to actually predict at which direction the system will have to go or will tend in order to reach equilibrium. Now, what if we already have a system in equilibrium and then we introduce some changes to it in the form of chemical stress? And that chemical stress can either be adding a product or a reactant, removing a product or a reactant, changing the pressure of gases, changing the volume of the container, changing the temperature of the reaction, or adding a catalyst to the reaction at equilibrium. So according to Le Chatelet's principle, these chemical sources of stress will actually result in a disruption in the equilibrium, and the system will tend to shift in a direction that tends to eliminate or reduce that stress that is added or that change that is added. Let's start first with the effect of the addition or removal of a reactant or product. So, according to Le Chatelet's principle, if you add a reactant, okay, let's write that down somewhere. Okay, so if you add a reactant, and let's actually just use the plus sign. So if you add a reactant, okay, what will happen will be the system should, the system in equilibrium should shift towards the right to get rid of that extra reactant, okay? So that means that if you add products to a system in equilibrium, the reaction should shift to the left, okay, to get rid of the extra products. Now, if you remove a certain concentration of reactants, okay, so all of these here, by the way, are concentration, okay, if you remove a certain concentration of reactants, then the equilibrium or the reaction will tend to regain equilibrium by reproducing what is lost, okay, and then the same thing goes with products, okay, so for products, um, system shifts to the right once you remove those products. So one good way to illustrate this will be this reaction between butane being converted into isobutane. Okay, in this system at equilibrium, you have a total of five isobutane molecules, the one in yellow, and two butane molecules. Okay, now let's say for example, we disrupt the equilibrium and to the system added seven molecules of isobutane. So the system here in the middle is not in equilibrium anymore, okay? We have here a Q value not equal to K. In fact, Q here is greater than K. So therefore, this reaction must shift towards returning to equilibrium in which we form more butane molecules. So when it does that, the equilibrium actually, again, is reestablished by the reaction shifting to the left, okay? And what happens is two of these isobutane molecules will actually be converted back into butane, okay? And now we have a 10 to 4 ratio, which is mathematically equal to 5 over 2. And that's how the system regains equilibrium. So. More on the mass side, so Le Chatelet's principle is actually more of qualitative. But let's appreciate first the math and answer this problem. So um, similar reaction as to what we have earlier, but this time um, you have the following conditions. Okay, so the first thing again that you should do is write an ice table. Okay, so that is butane, okay, going to isobutane, okay. Okay, and then um, we should write the value for K. So K is just the concentration of isobutane, okay, divided by the concentration of butane. All right, and then um, we're going to write um, the initial concentration here. Now, instead of writing change, um, let's write here something first, like concentration after adding. Um, 
after adding butane, that's what we added. And then change, and then finally equilibrium. Okay, so let's write a line there. Sorry if it's not straight. Okay, so we have initially um, a concentration of butane to be 0 0.500, okay? Then isobutane is 1.25. Okay, now after equilibrium has been established, um, so this is actually initial, but keep in mind this is already at equilibrium, okay? So um, after equilibrium has been disrupted, um, you have the following concentrations. So we added um, 1.5 mole of butane and we are working with the one liter flask. So that should just be 0 .0, 0 .500 rather, plus 1.50 of butane. And then for isobutane, this remains 1.25. Okay, the change in butane concentration should be minus X. Uh, the change in isobutane concentration should be plus X. Okay, um, it's still minus X because butane is still the reactant and it's still plus X for isobutane because butane is still the butane is still the product. Okay, so here um, the equilibrium when re equilibrium is re-established, re-established. Okay, so this will be two minus X. And this will be 1.25 plus x, keeping in mind that this too, by the way, is from this. Okay. So um, we can write, uh, or we can plug in these values. Um, we have a value of k actually, so that's 2.50. Okay. The concentration of isobutane upon re-reaching re re equilibrium should be 1.25 plus x. All right. Divided by 2 minus x which will um, equal to um, 2.50. Um, 2 minus x is equal to 1.25 plus x. Okay, um, I'm just going to jump the gun here and the answer here should be x is equal to 1.08 molar. Okay, um, that is how much has changed. So therefore, um, the new equilibrium concentration of isobutane. So let's write that as isobutane new. Again, this is at equilibrium. Should be equal to 2 minus 1.08 molar. Okay, so that should be 0 0.93 molar. Okay, and then the new concentration of butane. Okay, new. Should be equal to um, 1.25 plus 1.08 molar it's equal to um, 2.32 molar so um, and then after that one thing that you can do is to check okay check if um, the ratio is still 2.5 so what you do is um, using this k expression okay is 2.5 equal to um, 2.32 molar divided by 0 0.93 and it turns out that these two are actually equal to each other so that means that equilibrium indeed has been re-established all right um let's answer this problem so 12.63 suppose you have that reaction and it already has reached equilibrium you're asked to um, predict whether the equilibrium will tend to shift to the right left or nothing will happen okay if you add solid uranium dioxide, so uranium dioxide is in the reactant side, but so notice that uranium dioxide is a solid. And if you guys remember, we don't actually put the concentration of solids in the equilibrium expression. In fact, the K here should actually be written as concentration of uranium tetrafluoride times water squared, okay, divided by HF to the fourth power. So you do not actually see here in the ex expression for K, the concentration for uranium dioxide. So this one adding um, a solid to this system in equilibrium has no effect, okay? 
So again, we considered that solids and liquids have constant concentrations versus aqueous solutions and gases. Okay, the reaction is performed in a glass vessel, HF attacks and reacts with glass. So this just means that now you have a lower concentration of hydrofluoric acid, okay? So if this hydrofluoric acid on the reactant side is lowered, then in order to replenish it, the equilibrium must shift to the left, okay? To reform hydrofluoric acid or hydrogen fluoride gas rather. And then water vapor is removed. So um, for case C, that's lower H2O, okay? So this one should go down. If that one happens, then the reaction should shift to the right to replenish it. 